Good morning, everybody. Welcome to our um, webinar series um, as part of Construction Safety Week. Um, uh, this session is going to deal with um, welding fumes and how they pose as a potential hazard um, to occupational health. So we have a brief presentation deck, which we'll, we'll, we'll walk through. Thank you. So what is occupational health? What's it defined as? Um, occupational health encompasses a range of work activities and when work is associated with any of the eight hazards presented in the, in the diagram, um, it may result in disease or illness. Procedures and risk assessments are, are put in place to protect workers from disease or illness and conditions hazardous to health in the workplace. So you can see there's eight hazards listed there and um, fumes um, is one of the eight and that's the one that we're going to discuss this morning. What are welding fumes and those of you that are involved in welding will be very familiar with this but welding fumes are created when metals are vaporized by high temperatures and then quickly condensed small particle sized metal oxides mainly arising from the welding rod burning or the wire depending on the type of welding you're, you're, you're engaged in. The visible part of the fume cloud is mainly made up of very fine particles of metal, uh, metal oxide and flux. The constituents of the fume will depend on the type of welding, whether you're welding stainless, mild steel, aluminium, um, whether you're using TIG, MIG or stick welding. Um, if the material that you're welding, might, it might be dirty or there might be a coating on it, it might be zinc or galvanized or it might be painted. Um, or it could be contaminated with oil or paint, okay? All of those factors will impact on the type of fumes that your welding procedure will generate. Now, um, you also have welding gases, um, as well as the fumes. Welders may also be exposed to gases and they can include carbon monoxide, nitrous oxides, ozone, O3, um, especially when you're welding aluminium, you can you have the potential to generate ozone from oxygen, okay? Um, and then you have your, your shielding gases or your purges such as argon or helium. Um, ozone is produced um, by oxidizing O2 to O3 um, and the oxidizing agent there is the UV which is produced in the arc when you're welding. That's where the ozone gas can potentially come from. So what are the effects on the um, operator? I suppose the, the health effects can be varied. They can be, and, and they depend really on the amount um, and the type of welding you're doing and the length of exposure. Um, so if you take the example where you're doing tack welding in a well-ventilated area, it's unlikely to cause a problem. Um, but if you're doing high volume, continuous, heavy welding in a poorly ventilated area, it can seriously damage your health. Short-term health effects include respiratory irritation, temporary breathing difficulties, and metal fume fever, which has similar symptoms to flu. Long-term health impacts could potentially include asthma, cancer, pneumonia, and nervous system damage. Now, in 2019, we uh, carried out an occupational uh, a report by a company called Access Environmental Services um, on the manufacturing facility in Mallow um, to measure what the level of uh, fumes that we have in the manufacturing, manufacturing facility and to evaluate whether they complied with the current code of practice, which is 2018 um, for chemical agents and regulations. Thankfully, the results showed that all samples tested were within the guidelines and within the legal parameters. So what can you do to protect yourself? Okay, be familiar with the safety data sheets and the risk, and the risk assessments for the materials that you're welding and at all times follow the controls um, and the recommendations that you're given by your supervisor. Controls may include um, reduce the amount of welding that has to be actually undertaken. So uh, use cold jointing, uh, use mechanical fasteners, uh, well lighter material uh, to produce less fumes. Um, 
and welding should only be completed by properly authorized and competent people who have had sufficient training knowledge and experience and where you where apprentices are welding they should be adequately supervised at all times that goes without saying um, you should always ensure that your equipment is in good working order and it's properly maintained um, the work area should be sufficiently ventilated before you start welding um, avoid welding uh, dirty or painted or coated surfaces like for example galvanized steel um, clean off the coating first before you weld and try and avoid cleaning coatings um, by burning paint etc off or grinding as this creates additional dust and fumes um, which you be trying to you should be trying to avoid um, you can use slightly different techniques which can minimize the amount of fumes that you actually are exposed to um, rather than standing directly over something when you're welding if you slight, stand slightly off it um, is actually minimizes the amount of fumes that envelop your welding helmet um, obviously understand what you're welding whether you're welding mild steel whether you're welding stainless whether you're welding aluminium and understand where a particular job is low risk such as where you're doing tack welding um, for example in a well ventilated area or high risk high volume welding make sure that you have properly ventilated area and your workspace is properly laid out for that task. Try and avoid welding in a confined pulley vented area um, without protection. Just be aware of people that are around you as well um, in your work area um, who could potentially breed in uh, fumes and gases that you're generating. Um, obviously your, your screens should be in place to um, exclude your welding zone um, that's good practice and those screens should be surrounded by flame retardant as well to avoid fires. Personal protective equipment PPE which should be worn at all times so obviously wear um, welding gloves, proper welding protective clothing, um, a shield with your, um, with your screen in good condition um, and if you're talking about high high volume welding or heavy duty welding you should consider an air fit helmet it's good practice um, if you have any information additional information require questions just please refer them to the hr or the hsqe uh, department in related to um, this subject and also please your direct supervisor in the manufacturing facility <laughs>